Hello, saints. This is Dr. Francis Mounds, your host on the Order of Melchizedek television show right here on Faith TV. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm excited. You know, I'm blessed when I'm hearing the miracle testimonies that are coming from around the world, how this ministry is touching the lives of so many of God's people around the world. Well, listen, on last week, we began a powerful uh, unpacking of this revelation on the priesthood of Melchizedek. I made mention of the fact that the, the order of Melchizedek, or at least the understanding, the body of thought around the order of Melchizedek is being the elephant in the room in the theology of the body of Christ. And once the church addresses this elephant in the room, you are going to find that your whole ministry is going to change. The, your, the, your enthusiasm in the kingdom is going to go to another level because you're going to find so many ways God intends to deploy you as a child of God here on earth. So you're not just waiting for Kumbaya when the day when you're going to leave this terrible place called earth. You know, you actually become an important instrument in the, in the unfolding saga of the government of God as the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of God and of his Christ. Praise God. So we're going to go back to Genesis 14 because it's going to take us a while, at least a couple shows before we can get out of Genesis 14. There is so much on it on the priesthood of Melchizedek. Because uh, this is where he appears for the first time, where this priesthood is revealed. The curtain are put aside and we encounter a powerful priest called Melchizedek. As we said on last week, uh, 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 the word Melchizedek is a Hebrew Aramaic word that literally means king of righteousness or my king of righteousness. So either way you, 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 you slice it, you are dealing with, uh, with the priesthood of a king of righteousness. But now I want to focus on where this priesthood of Melchizedek appeared to Abraham. Because you see, God is a master at making an entrance. He waits until the conditions in the environment are right, to, are right, so that we, are right and ripe. So that when God unveils a mystery, the mystery is aided by the props around it. So the props help us understand the nuances of the revelation and what that thing is supposed to do in our lives when we come under it, when we embrace such a priestly order within the economy of our own spiritual lives. Well, the priesthood of Melchizedek, uh, the timing of, that, uh, of the appearance of Melchizedek in the life of Abraham is very, very interesting. I believe it's very sovereign because it, it tells us a lot about what the priesthood is supposed to be doing in our life. Well, uh, 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 before Melchizedek appears to Abraham, there is a time of war being described in Genesis chapter 14, where uh, 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 feudal nations decided we're not going to give tribute to the, 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 to the nations that they were giving tribute to. And one of them was the kingdom of Babylon. And they said, the king of Sodom and Gomorrah said, we don't want to be giving tribute anymore. Maybe they thought they were big enough. They didn't need to do it anymore. But the matter of, but, 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 but this relates to a massive war, a war. Actually, the first uh, multinational war in the Bible. It's actually the first recorded multinational, which is a microcosm of what would happen later during the days of Hitler, when there would be a global war of nations around the world, and millions would die trying to deal with fascism at the time. But in this particular moment, it was over tribute. They begin to fight over the issue of tribute. Even though uh, 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 Lot, who was Abraham's uh, nephew, was living in Sodom and, Sodom and Gomorrah at the time, had a successful business uh, 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 as a rancher, very successful. The reason he left Abraham is because they could not live together. They had so much property. So he moved to Sodom and Gomorrah to live in that city. Even though it was morally challenged, he lived there and had a successful business for a little bit. But unbeknown to Lord, he's about to become a collateral damage. He's about to become collateral damage of the warfare between the kings in the marketplace who are fighting over tribute, who are fighting over territory, who are fighting over, the, who are fighting over who's going to get what piece of the marketplace. Well, in the, in, the, in, in the war that ensues, the king of Sodom loses the fight. And because he loses the fight, he escapes in the mountains. And the Amalekites are able to come into, and the Babylonians 
able to come into the land of Sodom and they took Lord and captured him with his wife and took them as prisoners of war. This caused Abraham to get, to get involved and it's during this time of Abraham coming back after they had rescued Lord from, the, from these invaders that, they, that, that God chose at this moment to reveal the priesthood of Melchizedek. And I asked the Lord many years, I said, Lord, God, why, why, why would you bring the priest of Melchizedek at such a time? And he said to me, what's well, number one is, he said, the reason I brought, the, I revealed the priest of Melchizedek to Abraham in a time of war is to let you know there is no priesthood more suited to helping my people navigate seasons of war in the spirit or even in the natural than the priesthood of Melchizedek. Because it's a priesthood of the kingdom that reestablishes our dominion. It's a principle of the kingdom that he reemphasizes not just our priestly nature, but our kingly nature. Let's us know we're not just people flying by the night. We're not just people trying to survive the day. We are people of the kingdom. We are the people that, that we are the people who have received the kingdom. It is up to us to control the affairs of nations. So because Abraham was actually missing in the negotiations that were happening among the, 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 the nine kings. Where they were fighting over territory, over nations. What is interesting is that Abraham is the one who carries the promise to be a father of nations. And yet when nations are fighting over the economy, when nations are fighting over territory, the one guy who had a divine promise to be a father of nations was missing. He was living by the trees of memory, being a good, for lack of a better word, being a good person of faith. Nice, decent Loving God, but God said, but God is like, I don't like the picture. I did not bring you out of your father's house in the land of the Chaldeans. I did not rescue Abram from the from worshiping idols among the Babylonians for you just to come and hide by the trees of Mamre, having a great life that's blessed, but you don't meet, but you but nobody in the world is feeling the essence of your power. I raised you to help, I raised you to give me an excuse to show up in the fight for nations. You are the father of nations. What are you doing? Just being a good Christian, a good uh, 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 person of faith. By the trees of memory. So God divinely orchestrates a situation that will force Abram into the fight. Now the nation is about to find out that this man, God Abraham, who has been living by the trees of memory is very powerful in God. He's able to accomplish with 380, he's able to accomplish a masterful victory with 318 men trained in his own house. By any stretch of the imagination, this is supernatural. Because these were not weaklings, these were men of war. The Babylonians, they, they, they were men of war. They have destroyed four nations, they have rampaged Sodom. But Abraham defeated them in one night with God's presence upon his life. I can imagine what's happening now in the society. I can imagine the, what was on the news in the morning, what the media was saying in the, in the next morning. He was on every, I mean, just if you have to bring him down in our, in our time, he will be on social media, he would be on Facebook. People will be like, who is this new kid on town? Who is this Abraham? Do you know what he did last night? He destroyed five nations, five nations with 318 men and a few allies around him in one night. Who is this guy? Now, every king knew there was an Abraham. This is exactly what God wanted. So the order of Melchizedek is going to reposition the church from a weakling church, a church barely surviving, to a dominant, triumphant body of Christ that is known by political power blocks, that is known by every power blocks in the realm of the spirit, where the devil can count you. The devil can even count you. In a lot of churches, the devil does not even count us. We don't mean anything in the power structures. We just have a good church. Sunday service comes. We raise our tithes and offerings. We, we, we give our people a little bit of a message. There they are gone. They come back again. Come on. The devil does not even, they don't, they don't even worry about that type of church. You, you can keep having it. It's the church that begins to wrestle for the narratives of culture. So, you, know, you, can, you can say you can call a boy a girl. You can call a man a, a girl. He's not. You can call a woman a boy. Those narratives, when the, when the church triumphant begins to get involved and said, no, we're going to take back the marketplace. We're going to take the definition of the marketplace. We are tired of the marketplace being run by heathens. This is the order of Melchizedek. It's Abraham getting involved. It's Abraham coming out of his comfort zone and fighting 
for his own family. His family has been captured by these narratives. His family, Lord, has been captured by these powers. How many of us, our families have been captured by the powers of this world? We are powerless to do anything, not in the order of Melchizedek. I believe as the church, you and I enter this order of Melchizedek. This Mambi Pambi Christianity is dead. You come into a place of power where you're going to be felt like John the Baptist. Power structures knew who John the Baptist was. Power structures knew who Jesus was. Do they know you? Do they know your ministry? Do they know your business? Are you making noise? Or, or are you making the wrong kind of noise? So the Lord said to me, that's the reason why the Melchizedek priesthood appeared to Abraham in a time of war is to let you know what the priesthood does. It is the victorious, triumphant priesthood. So how do you prove it's victorious and triumphant? You put it in war. You can talk all you want. God is a miracle God. Show me a miracle. You can say God heals. Well, here's the sick. Heal them. You see, that's the reason. Some of these things are put in front of us. God wants to authenticate to a culture that does not believe God. That I'm still in, in charge. I'm still the one who opens blind eyes. I'm still the God who called, can cause the dead to rise again. Why? Because I create those situations in your culture. Then I do it. Then I raise a man from the priesthood of God who challenges that situation or that spirit. And there's a miracle. Now you know there's a God who works miracles. So Abraham now becomes God's man by which God will now reveal the principalities in the heavenly realms to the culture around that there's another power block that is not witchcraft, it's not divination. Because all these nine kings, the Babylonians, the Amphorites, all of these people, the Gomorrahs, the Sodom, they believed in devils. They worshipped demons. They worshipped witchcraft. So what, do, what powers do you think they brought to the, to, to the marketplace? What powers do you think they brought to the negotiating table? They are powers of their evil gods. Guess what was missing? The power of Jehovah. Because God's man, Abraham, was busy being a good believer. Don't want to mess with nobody. Don't want to say anything wrong. Just, just let me and my family, we are, I mean, oh, we reach our children. I mean, the money is there. We lack for nothing. No. God says, no. I want you to register my power in the system. That's the order of Melchizedek. I have people have told me that the ever since I attended your school on the order of Melchizedek, my life has changed. Completely. He says there's an ascendancy in my spirit I've never felt before. There's a power in God I've never had before. I understand it. Because when a mystery is revealed and you come under the mystery, the power of that mystery is going to be released on your life. That's the power of a mystery. That's why the devil doesn't want you to unlock mysteries. Because the power of the mystery you unlock becomes yours. So as you're coming into the order of Melchizedek, get ready to see the supernatural power of this dimension made real in the economy of your life. Made real in the economy of your life. It's going to change. Your marriage is going to change. Your business is going to change. Because what's going to happen? You're going to superimpose on your business, on your ministry, on your marriage, the power of an eternal priestly order that appeared in a time of war and said, I am not scared of the war in the marketplace. I'm going to take it over. By the time it was over, Abram took it over. He was running the show. He had all the money of the nine kings. And he had the people of the people of Sodom. So much that the king of Sodom had no choice but to come and negotiate with a man he did not know before. Now he knows this man. He's a power prayer. When kings or heads of nations begin to talk to you, drive to your house, you are something. You are a power for God. Now the king of Sodom is traveling to Abraham, not the other way around. Power changes hands when you come under the order of Melchizedek. Government will come and seek you out. People come and seek you out. They don't know what it is because there's a power over your life that says, okay, this is not Christianity as usual. This is not the mambi pambi cry for me, forgive me type of Christianity. This is a new dimension, a new grace. Now listen, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere because I'm just getting warmed up.
The Battle of Altars, Spiritual Technology for Divine Encounters is another blockbuster book from Dr. Francis Miles. It contains power-packed revelation and prayers of activation that will unravel the ancient mystery behind the biblical subject of altars and how they affect us on a daily basis. You will learn why all spiritual warfare in the Bible, your life, or country comes down to the battle between righteous and evil altars. You will learn how to identify evil altars that are operating in your soul or generational bloodline and how to destroy them. You will learn how to overthrow the evil altars of your father's house, how to take those evil altars in the course of heaven, and how to successfully prosecute them in the name of Jesus. For more information on this book, go to www.francismiles.com. To purchase this book, go to www.francismiles.com. Friends, I hope you are being blessed as much as I am enjoying teaching this thing. But I believe that a new day in the church has come. I believe we are in the era of Melchizedek. We are in the era of a Melchizedek generation of Christians around the world. I believe we, I believe we are. And I know, that, I know that the Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. The meaning is that the first thing God was doing is the last thing he'll be doing. The first priesthood that's revealed in scripture is a priesthood of Melchizedek, not Levi. Levi comes many, comes many hundreds of years after Abraham has this life-defining encounter with the priesthood of Melchizedek. So in the order of first mention, which is something that we are taught in Bible college, that in, in, in the interpretation of scripture, or hermeneutics, there is, a, there is a law called the law of first mention. In the law of first mention, it simply means this. That the first, if you want to understand the subject of anything, go back into the Bible to the first time that scripture or that element is mentioned that carries the entire understanding of that thing through scripture. So it's called the order of first mention. Well, based upon the order of first mention, the first time the word priest in the Bible is ever mentioned, it is to deal with the priesthood of Melchizedek. Letting us know that God's desire has always been for the body of Christ, for his children to function in the priesthood of Melchizedek, not Levi. As a matter of fact, if the children of Israel had not disobeyed God, every firstborn in their family would have been the priesthood of God. That means every all 12 tribes would have had a priest in Israel who would have been the firstborn. God had first chosen the firstborn to save him and then after the rebellion, after they built the golden calf and Moses came down from Mount Sinai, he finds him worshiping this golden calf. God changed his mind from the firstborn of every tribe because now they had been defiled. The people that did not celebrate the golden calf who had not uh, 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 killed, uh, who had not defiled themselves in the idolatry that came around worshiping the golden calf. The only tribe that remained pure in that scenario were the Levites. That's how they became chosen. And then they became the priesthood of Levi. But God never wanted the priesthood of Levi. He said to Israel, you're going to be a kingdom of kings and priests. God always wanted them to have a kingdom of priests. A kingdom of priests. Kings and priests. It was always what God wanted. The Melchizedek order is what God always intended in his first mention. Therefore, what God began to do at the first is what is going to close the age of men with. So I believe we are in the era of Melchizedek till the coming of Jesus Christ. We are in the era of Melchizedek. And you, we, we do well to understand this mystery called the mystery uh, of the priesthood of Melchizedek. Which Paul says in the book of Hebrews, we have so much to tell you about the priesthood of Melchizedek. But you can bear it because you are so caught up drinking milk. But milk is for babies. But the strong meat, which is strong meat, belongs to those who are mature. Who, by the, uh, by, 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 by the reason of use, have trained their senses to exercise, to descend between good and evil. So we're letting us know that the, 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 the priesthood of Melchizedek will never be given to baby Christians who just want to have milk. So if you go to a milk church, how do, I know you're go how do you know you're going to a milk church? Because every message is about therapy. It's, uh, it, every message sounds like you went for therapy. Five steps to a new you. How to get over depression. You know, how not to kill yourself. 
you know, how to stay married when you feel like, I mean, all of that is, has its places. But you know what that means? It means you are living at the place called self. There is a place where you die. You are concluded. You are gone. Your life is now, the life you now live, Paul says, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me and loved for me. Now we can talk about Melchizedek order. So we're not living for ourselves anymore. We're living for God. We're living for the Christos. We are living for Christ. We're not talking about, you know, our feelings. They are gone. Crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But the life I now, but the, but the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. That is the realm of the Melchizedek order. So, we say that Melchizedek appears in a time of war. But there's something also that's happening at the same time. We see that the family of the family, Abram's family, is captured by the demonic forces, uh, the, demon, the, the powers that be that are operating in the marketplace. So Lot, his wife, his daughters, they find themselves as prisoners of war. But it's Abraham, after he gets involved, who recovers them all. He brings back his entire family. And the Lord said to me, I want you to see what's going to happen to the body of Christ when the body of Christ begins to function under the order of Melchizedek. I'm going to begin to restore families that have been captured by the demonic powers for whatever reason. I've been captured. Families that have been destroyed. I have actually seen families, entire families restored under the priesthood of Melchizedek. People told me, as soon as I came under the order of Melchizedek teaching that you provided, I said, as soon as I did that, my marriage began to turn around. He says, my children would not speak to me for years, began to call me. What is this? I said, said, in the Melchizedek order, there is something in the priesthood of Melchizedek that lends itself to the restoration of entire families and tribes. So I really believe there's going to be a recovery of family because God ultimately is a God of family. So the priesthood of God has to care about family. So Abraham gets back Lot. He gets back his Lot's wife. He gets back his grandchildren, the daughters, and all the women on the people. So I believe that under the priesthood of Melchizedek, we're going to see entire families restored. We're going to see that happen. But not only that, what happens is the Bible says the goods that were taken, the finances, the resources that were captured by the, by the, by the, by the, by the Amalekites, the, the Babylonians, are returned. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is this, that as you and I come under the priesthood of Jesus, this priesthood of the order of Melchizedek, we are going to begin to see financial restoration on a level we've never seen before. Money's resources, assets that were captured by the hands of the enemy, by evil altars or by the working of witchcraft, whatever the reason, we are going to see recovery. As a matter of fact, it was the order of Melchizedek that was connected to a recovery David experienced at Ziglag. Because when David comes at, to, to Ziglag in 1 Samuel chapter 30, and he finds his house has been burned down, everything has been lost, his family has been taken after crying and uh, realizing all this crying is not going to get the job done, David asked for Abiathar, who was one of the sons of Aaron, to bring him the ephod, which was the holiest garment in Judaism, the holiest garment in the Levitical priesthood. And he says to Abiathar, give me the ephod. Give me the ephod. Let me put it on. Why is a man from the tribe of Judah, hello David, putting on the ephod that a Levite, Abiathar, is putting on? Unless David had the revelation of a higher priesthood than Levi, and he did, according to Psalm 110. David says, and the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. And then it's David who tells us in verse 4 of Psalm 110, it's David who tells us, and the Lord has, has, has sown, and he will not repent or relent. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So David had the revelation of a priesthood higher than Levi. So when he was in trouble, and wanted recovery of family because the enemy has taken my family. I don't know where my wife is. I don't know where my children are. I don't know where they are. There's no GPS. There's no, there no drones. Where do I find them? There's a priesthood of recovery. How did David know that? Because David read the Tanakh. 
He knew how when Abraham met Melchizedek, he recovered his family. So he knew the recovery of my family is in the same priesthood that recovered Lot and Lot and his family in the days of Abraham. So he asked Abiathar, give me the ephod. Have the revelation of a priesthood that's higher. And then he put on the ephod. In that, and his, as he put on the ephod, the Bible says, as he put on the ephod, the spirit of the priesthood came upon him. And he, God began to talk to him. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. At the end of the day, he recovered his entire family. Not one was killed. Friends, I believe as the church embraces this order of Melchizedek, marriages that are on the verge of collapse will be put back together. I believe it. Why? Because I've seen it again and again and again. Children who have not been talking to parents, children who, have been, who are running away from the court of God upon their life, who begin to yearn for God again. They won't even know what's happening because you as a parent have come under the priesthood of Melchizedek. You see, just because the priestly order of Melchizedek is available to all of us does not mean God is going to force it on us. We have to accept it by revelation and then it begins to work for us. Now listen, if you happen to miss any of our shows here on Faith TV, please go on my YouTube channel, Francis Mouse International. And subscribe so you never miss anything I put on YouTube. All these shows end up on YouTube anyway. And other shows that don't even come on Faith TV end up on YouTube. So if you want to check out some other things you are doing, go on our YouTube channel. Or you can go to my website, francismiles.com. And you can watch past TV episodes as well from our website. Thank you so much. I am looking forward to seeing you again next Thursday right here on Faith TV. Shalom, shalom. The Battle of Altars, Spiritual Technology for Divine Encounters is another blockbuster book from Dr. Francis Miles. It contains power-packed revelation and prayers of activation that will unravel the ancient mystery behind the biblical subject of altars and how they affect us on a daily basis. You will learn why all spiritual warfare in the Bible, your life, or country comes down to the battle between righteous and evil altars. You will learn how to identify evil altars that are operating in your soul or generational bloodline and how to destroy them. You will learn how to overthrow the evil altars of your father's house, how to take those evil altars in the course of heaven, and how to successfully prosecute them in the name of Jesus. For more information on this book, go to www.francismiles.com. To purchase this book, go to www.francismiles.com.